your um you should just listen to me through the discord and mute your and i'll just mute your stream output yeah, yeah. otherwise it'll get like a three second or 10 second delay or whatever it is it's a little confusing right. yeah that makes sense you could leave it on for the second uh, to make sure that the sound's working i guess because it's streaming now so hasn't shown up in my, my yeah list it takes a little while before the announcement gadget pops up so and i'll post a link in our discord as well saying that you're live oh yeah <laughs> micah says it's working so he's in the he's joined and he can hear you and me oh great oh he says you're quiet so i can actually fix that um let's see keep talking all right uh, <laughs> now I'm freezing up. I keep talking. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I've, I've only been up, you know, for like an hour here. So <laughs> it's it's still right. early. Yeah. <laughs> I chugged some coffee and, uh, and got some quick breakfast. Well, uh, it's eight o'clock here almost. So at night. So I've been up all day. Yeah. So you're on it. 9 a.m. for me, you know, and this is an early morning. <laughs> I don't this is and my. I don't usually uh, don't usually start work until about ten. So this is a it's a very special day in more than one way. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, this is like my busy teaching day normally. So I teach. I have four classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, wow, that's quite the load. Yeah, but like uh, the the. Um, one of the classes today was just like an exercise. So it was like a lab. So students just did the, the exercise. So it really wasn't a lot of, um, like work on my part. And one of them was reading a paper and one of them, my PhD student actually taught the class because it's like another exercise for that class. And so, and then in the last one, I actually had the grad students do presentations. So for today I had almost no workload for being like four classes. It's like, uh, sort of dreamy uh, yeah, levels it's all student based right yeah a lot of it is so I, I did have I mean the discussion for the paper I had to prepare for but like not to do a presentation or anything so um, nice yeah so, I used to be a teacher and I remember those kinds of days were always great yeah it's it's definitely like if I could manage to have more of that it would be better right because the um, the teaching load is rugged but uh you know, so the way my class structure is normally set up, like on Tuesday, I have lectures. And, um, and so as a result, Tuesdays are busy for me because I have to prepare lectures for both of or all of my classes normally. So, um, but some of them I've taught before. So it's not like a, it's not like a difficulty. Right. right. Just use the previous slides or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. Countdown timer on my side says we got about 10 seconds before it's supposed to go live. I, yep. mean, I mean, they've been able to hear us the whole sure time, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of fun because uh, I don't normally get to, like, from, from work, get to, like, have, I don't know, like, radio interaction with people. So mm -hmm. um, we set up the last stream. Uh, Pacific Plankton was with me, and I was... Um, I had her coming through like the speaker system, but I wanted to sort of get the stream kit system worked up a little bit better. And I actually think it looks really good um, because yeah, the overlay looks nice. Yeah. So, cause they can see, I guess I could turn on the stream now uh, because they can see um, who's talking, which I think is cool. Oh, there you are. Yeah. 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 I like that too. And um, so I really like that aspect to it. And then also if somebody comes in, they won't be like, who's the, disembodied voice <laughs> right <laughs> that's right hey printmaker what's up yeah hi printmaker um so i also set up a, a document camera over here hang on i'm going to turn that on so people can see it gets rid of the normal interface but it you, know, you can see my hands right and oh yeah uh so there's the compound that you gave me that we use that you're going to get me teach me how to to sharpen the tool with, right? And uh, you can see my uh, my cat got me recently. So, and then 
I just rub a little honing, honing compound on that. It'll clean it right up. <laughs> I bet it will. <laughs> so, and that's the honing compound on the actual, uh, let's see if I can get it to camera to focus on my hand. Yeah, on the actual like SEM stub. So I didn't coat it with gold like I normally do. Hey, Pac. Um, and normally I would coat everything with gold, uh, but I don't think that there's anything that's, I don't think that's anything's gonna charge up on this. So if it's made out of diamond dust and I'm not sure what else, I'm assuming that it'll be okay in the SEM. So, so you I, coat it with gold to keep it from, from building up a charge? Yeah, yeah, I just need it to be like, um, I need it to be something that electrons will kind of like roll off of. If there's a charge on it, it will, um, it will go into a ground, right? So right. Um, in this case, I think it will probably not, I don't think I need to gold coat it. The worst thing that will happen is it'll be a little charged up, so it's not a big deal. And um, hey, Andalor. And, uh, so is, is that because the electrons will stick to it and they won't bounce back and you won't get the resolution? Or is it because it's, it might be dangerous to uh, it's, shock you? No, it's not dangerous at all. Um, what, what happens is the, um, the SEM really is detecting the, the amount of electrons that are sort of hitting a sensor. And if you have um, like a bunch of electrons that build up on parts of the um, surface because it's non-conductive, what will happen is uh, those areas will look really bright. So it'll just ruin the image. Um, it doesn't right. actually do anything else, but like uh, electrons are just sitting there on the surface and they're popping off all over the place. And so um, they'll, they'll just cause the image in that spot to be like extra bright. So then it won't be able to figure out the, the balance between them. So, um, and then this is the actual tool that you sent me. And um, actually, I might want to move that a little. So I just smashed it onto this tape. It's carbon tape. And I think I might want to move it so that it's not sticking off the edge. So there, it's just basically the carving tool. And I put it so the channel side is down. So if you look at the end on, oh, that's where you broke it. That's um, right. <laughs> so it's a powerful moment. Yeah, uh, you you went too, you got too strong. Um, That's right. But you can sort of see the the carving edge of it is you know I think normally you would carve with the U channel up right. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. So it's pulling the wood out of whatever, and in this case that U channel I put it down because I want us to be able to see. Oops, I put it under the radio piece there. Um, I want us to be able to see the tip of it, which is where the actual blade is. And um, I took some pictures of it with just my camera before we started, but um, I didn't think they looked that great. But I think we can actually, I can kind of zoom in on it. So if I'm not touching it and it's sitting on the table, it might actually look okay with my document scanner. Um, so you can kind of see the blade. Uh, when I took pictures of it with my camera, I it through my stereo microscope and um uh it had rust on it so just let yeah, me know i think know. it's been sitting in a drawer for a while <laughs> well i'm gonna put it in an sem drawer here in a second so right. um so do you do you treat this before you put it in do you have to like degrease it or do you do anything to it or do you just pop it right in um other than coated in gold that's usually what i would do mm -hmm. with stuff i don't do anything else so right. um, it's just going to go straight from here. Um, I've got the, actually, let me see if I can, I'm going to turn off the document scanner for a second. And uh, oh, I've got my phone, so I can kind of showcase what's going on over here. Uh, but it's kind of hard for me to do it because uh, I have to use my hands to use the SEM, and I also need my hands to hold my camera. So uh, let's see. I've got a little droid cam I can put on and I got to get the uh, IP address right. So hang on. Yeah, okay. I've been burned by that IP address before. <laughs> Maybe I can just prop this up a little so you can kind of see it. Let 
I don't know if that's going to work. I need tools. <laughs> I've got this really nice hat Pacific Plankton knitted me, so I'm going to maybe use that as a prop here. There we go. So you can kind of see what's going on over there. Uh, and then I'm going to switch to the droid cam. So they won't be able to see who's talking for a second because I didn't set this up right. But this is the SEM right here. And um, this is the, uh, the camera, the infrared camera that's looking into the chamber. It's the chamber cam. And um, so I can just pull open the drawer. Oops. First, I got to make sure that it's completely unsealed. Which I'm not sure if it is was supposed to be. Hang on. I don't know if you caught that sound. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Well, that's all right. It's a, uh, it's, I'm always accused of doing ASMR streams. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to take off my headphones. I won't be able to hear you for a couple of seconds while I put this stuff on a stub and put it in the chamber. It won't be long, but um, let's see. What do I want to do first? Let's jump back to this camera so you can see me. And I'm going to just put this on in the seven spot. And a little bit of this compound on. So all I'm doing is we have a little carousel and that's the, um, the carving tool and that's the compound. So they're just on two of the carousel pieces. And um, you should always use gloves when you're doing this. So um, just pretend like I'm wearing gloves. Don't, nobody tell. All right, I'm gonna be radio dark for a second on my end while I switch over to the droid cam and swap out the stuff in the chamber. All right, great. You can entertain them, they'll be able to hear you. Yeah. All right, the smack talk can begin now, everybody. So, on that carving tool, so um, it's the um, there's a really shiny part on the carving end of it you can see, and that's what they tell us to look at when we're when we're sharpening and when we're honing um, to make sure everything goes right. Uh, and when when I got this uh, honing compound years ago, when I learned how to hone, they they told us that it did some some uh, alignment on the molecular level and I'm, I'm not really sure so that's kind of the point for this whole experiment here we want to see what is going on on the knife uh on the gouge i guess it's not really a knife um i want to see what's going on on the gouge when we hone it and i'm really interested to see what it looks like up close and more smack talk smack talk <laughs> who's smack talking what oh hey hey professor you're back <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Switch to this camera back. So uh, the noise you hear is the pump turning on uh, for the SEM. And when we stream... So the ASMR. Yeah, that's that's part of my ASMR feed. You're getting all tingly. Yeah. Well, there's the humming from the vacuum that goes on. And then, you know, sometimes I do a little humming just, you know, to myself, I guess. Uh, get it harmonized with the with the microscope. Um, and then sometimes the SEM chamber itself makes a lot of noise. And uh, and when we uh, rotate the little dial uh, on the SEM uh, to zoom in and out, it makes like a clickety click noise. It's really like subtle, but uh, I suppose if you're really into the ASMR, you'd hear it and you'd probably like that sound. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> well, I'll try to keep the, I'll put the mic right next to it so you can kind of hear the, it's like a tick, 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 tick noise. It's, uh, it's just me zooming in and out. So, um, let's see. So this vacuum, you're, you're, um, you, are you trying to make a, like a vacuum chamber inside the microscope? Is that the point or yes. just getting all the, getting all the dust out? What, what's the, um, uh, the SEM runs, the inside of the chamber always runs under a vacuum, under a very st strong, like, you know, negative atmosphere. And the reason it does that is because the, the way that it 
sees, if you'd like, is that uh, electrons, so, oh, I can do this, uh, I think, from where we are, hang on. Um, uh, let's see. So I can, let me switch back to the droid cam. So um, up at the top of this thing is a, an electron gun, and it shoots uh, electrons down through this column. And the column has magnets, and the magnets are used to sort of focus the electron beam. And all of that has to happen in a vacuum to get down to the chamber, which also needs to be in a vacuum, because if the electrons hit anything before they get to your sample, they'll get deflected. And then you won't be able to get any electrons, or you won't get them where you want on the sample, right? So the general idea is that get everything out of the way of the electrons by creating a vacuum. So that's the sim sense. simple way of thinking of it. And, and how, how do you, I guess, how do you isolate the electrons? Like, um, how do you get a beam of electrons, right? Is it, do you have to use, um, it, you don't use the magnets to do that, right? You use, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think about, like, I mean, as I understand electrons, right, they're, they're attached to, to protons and neutrons, maybe? Uh, how, do you, how do you get a beam of <laughs> electrons that are independent of one another, right? Do you use uh, electromagnetism to rip them off? What do you do? Do, they, do you order a, a jar of electrons from the science shop? They send it to you, you plug it in. Like, how, do you, how do you isolate them into a beam? So uh, if you look at the little diagram that I put up, uh, they can see it now, I think. Hey, Tiny Dragon on Fire and Millie Fu. Uh, and yes, the color scheme I love. It's actually very retro looking. Um, so... If you look at the little diagram uh, that I put up, I think you can see it, right? Am I on the right thing? Yeah. Yep, um, so up at the top, there's like a little round cylinder that says electron gun. And in fact, what's going on in there is there's a filament like a light bulb has. Uh, ex and it's actually almost exactly like a light bulb. It's got tungsten as the type of metal that's in there. And they run a very strong current through it. And when they do that, what happens is it creates a cloud of electrons around the tungsten. It also heats up. So um, there's a temperature aspect to it, and then there's also like a, just a charge aspect. And um, it creates like a, a cloud of negatively charged particles that are sort of swarming in that little chamber. And they have a negative charge because electrons have a negative charge if you think back to, I don't know, high school chemistry or whatever. And sure. Uh, on the diagram, there's like a red ring that's just below the electron gun that says anode. And that just is a fancy science way of saying that piece has a positive charge. And you can see from the electron gun coming down towards the anode are a bunch of rays coming out. And that is actually supposed to represent a beam of electrons that are being pulled towards the positive charge because they are negatively charged particles. And the strength of the anode determines sort of the acceleration of the electrons and then um, some of them will be you know captured by the anode but most of them will pass through in this sort of beam and then they go into the magnets and the magnets are just lenses they they just focus the beam and keep it basically tightly um, in a tight little cloud so it's like a in, a in a typical light microscope, everything would look exactly the same, except for you'd have a light source up at the top, and then you'd have a series of lenses. And in my microscopes, everything would be the other way around, because the light in mine is a transmitted light microscope, and the ones that I normally use. So the light passes through your specimen. So um, the light source is usually at the bottom in my microscope, and then there's a series of lenses and condensers that... Um, be, focus the light beam through the sample and it's doing the same thing with electrons so the electrons are basically f sort of f flung down with these positive charged components and magnets until they hit the sample which is just the in this little uh, sketch is the ant and um, is, is that ant going to be okay? no that ant is not okay <laughs> uh, oh boy because everything has to happen inside a vacuum. And it turns oh, out... Yeah, you need a little space suit for him. Yeah, if it were Ant-Man, uh, he might be okay. He'd be so toast, no way. He, he might be okay, because he has a spacesuit. suit. Um, but, but his eyes are exposed, I think. 
well, he, his mouth is exposed. I think, is I think that he can make his little, he has a little thing that comes down over his head when he gets yeah, he little. Yeah, right. Depends on the costume. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, right. So electrons will hit the ant, and um, what they do is knock electrons out of the ant. So um, we're using our electron gun to shoot at things that are on our stage, and um, their entire purpose is to basically... Uh, knock electrons out of the specimen, right? So they come flying out of the ant uh, as a result of being hit by electrons that are coming in. And then there's a detector, which is our secondary electron detector. So um, there's also another detector that's right above the ant that's back in the direction of the beam called a backscatter detector. And um, the backscatter detector actually shows you differences in density and the secondary detector shows you topography. Um, so you get these two indirect kind of depictions of it and then you, you um, like merge them? You can. Um, actually, you can get them independently or you can merge them. It's really, um, it's not uh, an either or situation. So it's, uh, uh, electrons are being captured by both devices. So, um, or they can be, I should say because mine usually I don't have the secondary, I have the secondary detectors fixed, it can't be taken out, it's always gonna be there. But uh, the backscatter detector on my instrument can be pushed in or out, so it doesn't necessarily need to be activated. And because I mostly look at diatoms, and they're made out of silica, and it's always silica, I don't really care about the differences in density because I, I can, it's just the same material. It's like, you know, looking right. at looking at a, uh, you know, all the same stuff is not going to look very different with respect to density. So if I were looking at something like a metal, then I might want to push it in so I could see, like, if you had two or three different kinds of metals, they would, you know, like nickel and copper or something, then... Uh, like a rusty carving, we we'll say. It could work. So um, we're going to try it. We'll, we'll push it in and we'll see what happens. So... All right. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is hide my little graphic... Uh, so it's not blocking everybody's field of view, if I can figure out where it is. Ah, it's this one. No, that's the wrong one. It's this one. Ah, so you should be able to see. And uh, there's a column pressure, which is the under the vacuum label on the far right at the bottom, um, which is telling us that the column pressure is good enough, strong enough, and um, gosh darn it, people like it. And um, that means I can turn on the high voltage, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, the voltage now we're charging up the electron gun basically and now it's firing Are you doing so you, you want to do you, as I understand it you want to get the the electrons really high energy is that so the wavelength is shorter so that you get a better resolution the electrons are used um, because they have a very um, a very short wavelength yeah so that's why they're better than light to right. to get the better resolution you need a higher a more frequent uh shorter wavelength and for electrons i f i always forget what the number is you think i would remember by now but it's like um it's in angstroms and mm -hmm. uh for light it's 400 to it's 380 to 750 is the visible light spectrum in nanometers so they're very different with respect to the wavelength. And as a result, um, the resolutions are very different. So you can kind of max out your visual light spectrum way before you max out the spectrum for, um, for a, an electron. Um, it's incredible. It's so brilliant. Whoever, whenever whatever they thought of this, what, like in the 30s or something? It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's astonishing that they would make that leap and decide to, to use this kind of... Uh, a method for seeing things, right? Smaller than things we can see. It blows my mind. Yeah, and um, I think uh, Pacific Plankton asked this question one time, like what was the first thing anybody ever stuck on an SEM? And so I went and looked for it. And they were looking at just some dirt, basically. So not super exciting. But, um, uh, but they didn't get a great picture, but they got a picture, right? So, and then once you have it, they just, they've improved the technology constantly since then. So. Um, so you can actually see, uh, if I put it, uh, there's a bunch of different speed settings, which you can't see me changing, but which I am. 
So right now, it looks really grainy because I've put it on the fastest speed. And so the image looks crappy because it's scanning very quickly over the subject. And what that lets me do is move the scanning electron microscope very quickly and it will redraw the image very quickly. So think of your old fashioned uh, TV with a tube and it scans across the screen very rapidly and it makes a picture, it looks like it's moving, right? So that's what this is doing. And so when I click, it moves and rebuilds the image. You can see the image. Good news, everyone. You can see the image, sorry, that's, I don't know if you heard that. Um, the, uh, the follower's noise came in my headphone, caught me off guard. Oh no, I didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, so you don't have to hear it, which is good, but I have to hear it, which means uh, when it happens, I always am like, <laughs> I can um, pretend to be freaked out when you are. Well, they can't see you, so. Um, well, they can hear me go, huh. That's true. Uh, but they might think you're just saying goose if you do that, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, so this is uh, what I speed setting that I would put it on if I wanted to move around and look at stuff, right? And then when I actually want to, like, take a picture, I slow the speed down. And you can see the beam. That's the actual beam moving across the, the, the screen as it builds the image. And, um, and then I can focus it on my good days anyway. Uh, there we go. So you can see a lot more detail. The slower the beam goes, the more detail you get, right? So right now it's on speed yeah. four. And when it passes by again, I'll drop it to eight. So a little craggy bit, the rust. Yeah, that's the rust. Um, so now you can see like speed eight, it's, it's drawing a lot more slowly. So if I tried to move the screen right now, you'd get like, uh, you know, like a little sliver of it drawing and then nothing else. Right. Mm -hmm. So not good. Um, but, uh, you can see the kind of crusty stuff on the surface. That's all the rust. And this is just the topography view. This is not the density view. Um, so if you're watching the uh, below me, right down here, directly below me is a little window that looks into the SEM so you can see what I'm doing uh, when I move things around. So um, what I'm going to do is raise up the, um, the carousel, which is what the sample was on, and um, get the specimen a little bit closer to us so we can zoom in on it basically. And it's just like a magnifying glass, like the closer you get, the better resolved your image is, right? Up to a point. Um, so when I move it up, um, and I need to speed it up a little so you can see, uh, yeah. we're a little closer. And also now when I focus, um, I can get even closer. So, you know, like we're not anywhere near the the limit of our instrument. We're actually just at about 77 times magnification right now. So you could do this on a stereo microscope. Uh, you don't need an SEM. How many angstroms is that? Uh, I don't know about angstroms, um, but it's uh, our field of view, like fully field of view across here. Um, if I move this up, you can see it's three millimeters um, from one side of the picture to the other, and also from the top to the bottom. So there's like a one millimeter bar right down there at the bottom that yeah. shows the scale and um but i can give you an example of like uh let's see i'm gonna, gonna so get it's like it. a billion angstrom it's a lot a lot of angstroms so we can zoom in though uh you know on just one of these little specks of rust i love how it looks when you zoom in i love the uh, distortion it gets before, <laughs> it, before it resolves it's super glitchy right it's this like it looks great wave of glitch uh so yeah. if you were I, I really should probably add that ASMR tag because uh, if you were coming for the audio ASMR and then I also throw on this crazy visual ASMR, right, with the glitching and the black and white lines moving through it and then crazy textures, right? So It's doing it for me. Yeah, well, it's good. So um, that's just a little piece of rust that we're looking at right there, right? So, um, you know, we can... We're not anywhere, again, we're not anywhere near the maximum resolution of this. We're still at, um, we're at 700 times, so about 10 times bigger than we were. And, um, uh, and normally when I'm looking at stuff, I can get, um, you know, a typical 
good picture for me can happen at uh, like 130,000 times. And we're at, right now I bumped this up to 3,000 times. So just for clarity, uh, if I stuck a diatom on here right now, you wouldn't be able to see it. It'd still be too small, or you'd be able to see it, but you wouldn't be able to resolve much of it. So, mm -hmm. um, but we're just be a little little denizen of the the rust pustule. Yes, it would just be sitting in here basically. So the the whole field of view is about thirty microns now. So you'd be able to see diatoms at this size, but um, you know the the uh, the detail is just basically starting to catch right here. We're at 7,000 times magnification. So like the high detail is really just sort of kicking in. So um, I also usually when I start off, I do some sort of like um, tricks to fix the magnification when you get really zoomed in. And um, I can't do all of them right now because they take a long time to kind of uh, to manage. And I don't think it's necessary. Uh, for what we're looking at, right? Because we're just looking at, we don't need to be this close. <laughs> just, I'll give you an example of where we are. Uh, we really don't need to be this close though. So let's see, I'm gonna change my beam intensity a little. Um, so that's just gonna, it's like drawing with a, a bigger nib pen, you know? Um, so there's a little bit of bleed around each pixel now. Now you're speaking my language. I try, I try. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out so you get a sense of like where, like where we are, right? I'm just gonna do it really slowly. So this is this little spot we're on, right? It, getting a lot of that uh, glitchy ASMR, visual ASMR. Um, it's so just like that movie Powers of 10. The, the cursor won't move, so I'll just back out and leave the cursor where it is, and then each time it redraws, we're kind of scanning outward a little, so you can get a sense of like, <laughs> where are we? Because you probably oh, yeah, lost this it. This is like the um, the Perseverance rover landing in reverse. <laughs> right. Exactly. It right? looks like the the Jezero crater there. <laughs> we're, we're doing the backing out instead of the zooming in. Yes, uh, and we're going into outer space. Yeah. Uh, so right now, our field of view is. 300 microns so still very uh very zoomed in and my mouse hasn't moved so we're still in the same position so this giant mountain range that we see to the north and the south um are pieces of rust right so yeah it looks just like a topography like um like planetary oh yeah yeah that's actually one of my favorite things about uh the scm is that the surfaces of things look like landscapes you know they look yeah, like these really crazy landscapes like we look like we could be looking at a planet surface right now right yeah absolutely i love the the how fractal like existence is right it's it's <laughs> a, a thing that i've been in, including in my work a lot lately and thinking about a lot just that kind of the macro to micro and, the, and how fractal just everything is right yeah so now we can actually see we're looking at a blade so there's that yeah <laughs> so that's actually the you know the, the, the weirdest planet i've ever seen <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I'm going to push in the, um, the, uh, the, um, brain's frozen for a second. Um, the coning compound. No, no, no. We can look at that. Uh, the backscatter detector, sorry. So oh, that's what I meant. I meant to say the backscatter detector. Right. So you see yeah. a little arm reaching in under the um the cone right now oh yeah on the scm and now it's looking through the hole where the backscatter detector so it's got like a little you know like like a uh, like in a notebook paper like a little hole that goes through the middle of that thing and the beam's just going right through so it's not hitting anything but when it hits the sample some of it will be coming back to the backscatter detector but i haven't actually uh so i don't let me see if I can see if you guys can see my... I don't know if you can see my mouse when it's over there. Um, but there's choices for me, which say A, B, A plus B, and then uh, A minus B, and A with a, you know, a, a bar and B, right? So A is our secondary detector, and B is the backscatter detector. So if I want to have um, a view that shows me both of those things, I can click this and it will redraw it, and it shows me what the topography looks like, which is on the left-hand side as the secondary detector, 
and you can can you see that right yep okay and then on the right hand side over here is the backscatter view of that same thing so you can see there's a it's difference like the density. yeah there's a difference in the density basically as a result of the rust mm -hmm. and so you so can is dark is the dark more dense or less dense uh that's a good question it's probably iron so i'm gonna guess uh it's a little bit more dense but i don't know i think brighter is usually less dense so with diatoms it's not a it's silica it's a thing right silica and yeah. silica actually it's silica yeah. wrapped in gold so it's going to look just like silica wrapped in gold golden gold basically. those are some high flying diatoms <laughs> they're blinged out yeah yeah so that's the two views right together. So you can kind of see uh, what it looks like with both views at the same time. And I bet after I, this might be really cool to image, uh, to get this image because then when I theoretically learn how to uh, clean and sharpen the tool, um, the rust will hopefully be scrubbed off, right? So we could take this picture and then come back and look at it, you know, without the rust on it and see if I did a good job or not, I guess. I'm not sure if the honer rusts or not. Uh, usually, usually the carving tools don't get rusty because I use them. Right. Uh, uh, this one, like I said, it was sitting in a drawer for a while because it, it broke and I just well, I'm, lost it in a drawer. I imagine it will, uh, so. it will scrape it off, right? At least in theory. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the honing compound affects that or if it... Um, I, I'm, I'm not really sure at all, so this is, I guess, why we're doing this, right? Right. So I'm going to just take a picture. First I'm doing is uh, changing the, um, the contrast and the brightness. So just like an actual picture, it is looking at the reflected or uh, whatever, uh, irradiating electrons. And it's trying to figure out like bright versus dark. So the more electrons that hit the sensor, the brighter it appears, the fewer that hit, the darker it appears. And so if something is pointed towards the sensor, it'll appear bright it'll and if it's on the back side of you know away from the detector it'll look like shadows so it tricks us into thinking that it's light and if you look in the actual chamber um like the little chamber view the the secondary detector is this little half circle that's down here under this crazy wand looking thing um, but it's actually a full circle if you could see into the chamber which we can't completely um but it's off to the side and it's meant to be off to the side to actually create something that looks like a shadow with your eye when you look at it, right? So if it was like right above, if it was in where the backscatter beam was, you wouldn't be able to get much of the shadows except for the edges. So it's trying to give us like a, a real, like authentic- A useful metaphor, right? Yeah. So it's just like if you had a flashlight and you were shining it on the surface of the subject and then your eye was on where the sensor is, right? Because your eye is the sensor that's catching the light. So. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's functioning the same way as your eye would in this in this setting, and then the the backscatter detector, which is the ring that we pushed in, it doesn't have all the shadows, right? It's missing all those elements because it's just seeing the density difference rate from directly above, and all of its sensing is basically done, you know, uh, perpendicular to the the specimen. Right, makes sense. So this looks like it's going to be a pretty good picture. I'm just going to hit the button and collect that. And it's going to capture both at the same time in this massive window that blocks out everything. Uh, but it'll... Oh, here's the old linen part. Yeah, yeah, this is the part that takes it's a the, while. The, the 56K, <laughs> trying to look at a photo. This is the, uh, this is the part where... Uh, you entertain them with stories about wood carving or something, I guess. So you've got about oh boy, I'll tell you three minutes or something. <laughs> I got no stories of wood carving. <laughs> they were asking in the chat earlier if this is the wood cutting tool, and yeah, this is a um, this is my small U gouge. So it's a little U shaped gouge basically. And when you make a wood cut, you want to remove the remove everything that's going to be white in the final image. So carving a wood cut is basically the same as carving a stamp. So if you picture a rubber stamp. It has the parts that are raised up and the parts that are below that that are below the surface, right? That, that have been removed from the surface. So this is the tool that's used to remove those parts um, from the stamp or from the woodcut. And so it's shaped like a U, so that you can kind of scoop it out. Um, there's ones that are shaped like a V, and apparently there's really important ones that are just flat that printmaker likes to use. But uh, <laughs> I uh, I have a little time for them. 
You don't like the flat ones? The the flat ones are okay, you know. We were talking about it in the stream the other day. Um, Shout out my uh, my mod my moderator printmaker who's in the chat right now she found uh, found some some description of printmaking tools online and and the the knife the flat one was described as the workhorse but i think this this u gouge is the real workhorse it's the so real it's just a deal. small little yeah it's a small little u-shaped piece of metal um and it's it's basically yeah, you just you scoop out all the white all the white areas in the final image and leave the black mm-hmm. and uh and so this is, um, yeah, I, you can kind of see the, um, if you look at it with the naked eye, you can kind of see the, the sort of, it's not a smooth U, right? You see like the kind of um, flat planes that kind of build up mm-hmm. that curve, right? Mm-hmm. Um, In here? Yeah, you can see on the microscope there, but, um, but all this, uh, all the bumpies. Uh, I mean, I guess all of that is rust, right? But there's some pop marks. Mm-hmm. So these are little uh, scours, probably from previous times when you sharpened it. Mm-hmm. So this is the yeah, the all grit. the the horizontal lines there, right? The grit is, or maybe you were, I don't know what you ran it over, but uh, I think that grit's diamond, and so it actually would put scour marks in metal, right? Mm-hmm. So it looks a lot. Uh, the the edge on the right there looks a lot rounder than I imagined it would. It's pretty it's not sharp, scale, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is an older one too. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of people they they take a um, like a stone, like a water stone or something, and they sharpen their tools. But um, I'm really bad at it, so I use the honing compound that we're going to look at, or that that you have there, um, which is kind of um, a quick and easy way of of kind of halfway sharpening things. But this tool has never really been sharpened since I bought it, um, and thankfully here, the carving tools. Um, here in Taiwan are really uh, inexpensive and they're good quality, so it's it's way less time and frustration just to get a new one for a couple bucks. Mm-hmm. So I don't usually um, don't usually hit them with the sharpening stone, just with the honing compound. So I mentioned that I can kind of do uh, a variety of things with the the um, the image. One of the things I can do is split the channel fifty fifty and then have it draw both of them at once, which is kind of cool. So it's doing that now. So I'm also going to get a picture like this, um, just so we have it. But that is half topography, half backscatter. And uh, because it's got the, you know, cool metal uh, that's in there, I don't usually take pictures of metal. So um, it actually adds a lot of crazy depth to the image. (laughs) I don't know if you can tell, like in here, uh, it just looks insanely like the 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 density underneath the topography just makes it look like insanely 3D. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it does look uh, like you could just reach out and touch it. Yeah, popping off my screen. So I'm gonna fix the brightness a little bit, and then I'll just take one image like this, and then we can go look at the compound, the honing compound. Um, do you know what's in this? Honing compound, by the way? I don't, but I'm pretty sure Printmaker does. Oh, yeah? He's uh, in the chat right now. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm what you call a, I'm a, I'm a carver, and Printmaker is um, an actual technical printmaker. You know, she knows all of, the, all of the materials and all the ins and outs. Yeah, it's the green one. Um, so I, 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 I just kind of, I get what works, and I use it. I, I don't... Um, I don't know. I, I don't know all the, the technical specs on it. That's why Printmaker sticks around. Yeah. She says uh, if it's green, it's most likely a combination of chromium and aluminum oxide. Okay. Uh, and it may or may not have diamond dust, depending on the brand. Yeah. I would guess it has diamond, kind of diamond from dust those, in it. Uh, from those marks on the tool there. Well, something's got to be able to scrape the metal, but uh, probably the yeah, chromium and the uh, aluminum probably isn't going to do much, but um, chromium might. Okay, so it's now adjusted for both of those. So I'm just gonna collect that picture and we get to you know, sit and watch it again while you tell stories about carving. Um, oh boy. Or I can, I can come back to the, the chat and I can say uh, hi to Tiffany SD and Estrella and uh, Mama Bon Bon and uh, Giftinoid, Gif- Glyftinoid, there we go. And uh, everybody else who's hanging out here wants a Mac 
So it looks like we have uh, Ursa Crafta. And you're doing some sort of a stream later this month with Ursa, right? That's right, yeah. Ursa and I are going to be doing a dual stream. And uh, we're actually going to be using images from you in the electron microscope and also from Pacific Plankton. Um, and we're going to be doing a draw along. So we're going to make, a, we'll make like a, a sheet with some little critters on it at a, at, at different uh, scale, I guess, right? Pacific Plankton's uh, microscope, sc microscope scale and then your electron microscope scale will put a kind of a, a sheet up of different things and then people can choose uh, whatever critters they like and we'll do a draw along. It should be a good time. Sounds cool. Yeah. And um, we'll be uh, probably donating some money to ocean conservation at the same time. Excellent. Yeah. So how are you, how, what's the technology that lets you both draw on the same screen? That's Ursa's department. <laughs> there's, <laughs> um, there's, some, there's some program. Ursa's done a bunch of dual streams. I've never done one before, so I'm actually excited for it. But you have, um, there, there's some, you click a link and it brings you to a, a page that has both streams up. Mm -hmm. You just mute one, but you can see both chats going on and you can hear them both. That's cool. Um, you hear the one through the other, kind of like people are hearing me through yours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's fun. It's great. Yeah, we did, um, uh, Ursa did one uh, a month or two ago where they were doing watercolor paintings with coffee, using different densities of, of coffee and different kinds of coffee to get the different values. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, that paint along was pretty fun as well. We should figure out how to do it so I can put uh, the SEM on one screen and Pacific Plankton can put the samples that she's actually looking at that I'm looking at like at the same time, you know? So you have a living organisms and I could have the SEM of those organisms. People yeah, that would be fun, yeah, because I, I like to see them side by side, right, compare. Yeah, except for it would be like on one side, everything moving super fast, and on the other side, everything just kind of drying like paint, right? <laughs> right. In the back. <laughs> right. This uh, downloading the image sort of sensation. Or I guess she could have the living organisms, and then I could stream the, the fossil material, which is what I usually look at from my light microscope, so we could have living and dead side by side. Maybe that would be a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit better. I don't know. Okay, so this is... Uh, backscatter plus secondary and the important part from this um, this image that you can see is this is the part where the you know the cuts right so that's the yep. blade part and it, it does look pretty dull to me so um, you know I guess we can compare the photos as well when we're done um, if I can figure out how to show those at the same time uh, I think I can do it or I might need to convert them because they come out as tips, but uh, I'll, I'll, if nothing else, I could put them up in the, uh, the Discord or, or our Discords, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. people could see them. So and the point, point two was to send you a dull blade so we can see how it looks before and after. Right, right. So let's scoot over to, uh, let's see. So this is the middle of this stub, and if I click on this button, it will take us immediately to the compound because uh, I, you know, I have control of that. And uh, so this is the dark stuff that you're seeing is actually the carbon tape that it's stuck to. And the bright gray and dark gray are the compound itself. So we can kind of scan in and look at it here. Um, I'm going to try to find some area where it's not quite so flattened. I smashed it on the table and then I smashed it onto the stub. So it's going to have sort of a smashed look, I guess. It doesn't look like it's charging very badly, considering I didn't gold coat it or anything. But if it's filled with aluminum and chromium and a little bit of diamonds, uh, it'll probably be fine. It will probably will not need to be uh, coated at all. Oops. When you coat stuff with the gold, do you have like a use a brush do you have a spritzer what do you how do you put stuff with gold do you dip it <laughs> i wish i had a gold spritzer yeah that would be great huh uh it, i think probably people would join my lab and then just spritz stuff with gold so um i would have to hide it probably uh let's see so 
You can see it's charging a little, just a little bit. Um, when I hit stuff, you can see there's a little bright. Sometimes when it goes over it with the beam, it, it turns kind of bright. Um, let me see if I can showcase what we use to sputter coat things with. I need to... Butter coat? Not butter. Not butter. Sputter. It's butter. It's butter. Yeah, that's a cool word. <laughs> sputter coat. Yeah. So, uh, did I lose the droid cam? Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's forgotten itself. Hang on. Technology is fun, and then it stops working right. Supposed to make everything better. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, I guess without technology, this would be a really boring stream, right? <laughs> well, uh, also, I wouldn't have upside-down pictures. Okay, so that little thing over there that looks like a gumball machine is uh, actually the sputter coater. And mm. it has a little pump, which is the... Uh, cylinder that's coming towards us with a red thing on top of it and then oh, yeah. the pump pumps out the bell jar which is the part at the top that looks like the gumball dispenser part and uh, that's where you put the sample and at the top of it like the top of this one has a piece of metal in it and then you put a charge through the metal and it makes a plasma cloud of whatever the metal is so you could use silver copper you can use um, gold you can use platinum you know any metal Basically, it will. It's it's a really thin like foil sheet of the metal, and you put a charge through it, and basically it turns it into a plasma cloud. And then things that are in the chamber get electroplated with whatever it is that you put in there as the metal. So for ours, I put in um, I put in uh, gold, but I do have silver. Uh, I think it's silver palladium or something like that. Um, <laughs> what kind of gumball machine did I grow up with? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit more cylindrical than, than ball shaped, but uh, I don't know what else it looks like. So that's what I go so with. I suppose, the, um, I suppose the university frowns upon you using that to make uh, Valentine's gifts for your wife? <laughs> uh, well, it's my lab. They probably wouldn't know any better. All right, well, I won't tell. But... Um, I don't. I don't know if she wants something that's like uh, cheaply butter coated. cheaply butter coated. Yes, in gold. Um, she might want the real deal. So, actually, I don't think my wife likes gold. To be honest, uh, I think she's if she's liking gold, it would be like a white gold. You know, I don't think. I think she, maybe she thinks gold is kind of tacky. So, hmm. she's like a silver and like amber and um, that kind of like, you know, more earthy aspects then. See, if I was given something that was like regular gold, I, I'd think, eh. But if it was something that was uh, sputter coated with that thing, I'd be swept away. Well, I could, um, and I have sputter coated uh, like dragonflies and butterflies, oh. and we've looked at all of those things before in my stream. Um, so at least potentially, um, you know, I, I could, uh, you know, like I could make her like a gold plated butterfly. I'd feel bad for the butterfly though. I mean, if I had, yeah, <laughs> if I had to kill it and then wrap it in gold, <laughs> that does sound a little bit like a James Bond villain, if I'm right. being honest. So. I captured and killed this butterfly for you. <laughs> Isn't it romantic? <laughs> well, also I've entombed this dead butterfly in gold. Uh, <laughs> right. so no matter what, it's kind of. So it does look like it's charging a little bit, and so the picture won't be great uh, if I'm zoomed in on this. But I just wanted to see if we could see anything, and it just looks like a powder, basically. So a <laughs> gold spider head. Thanks, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she probably wouldn't mind a spider head if it was like a little jumping spider. Those are cute. I mean, I think they're cute. I might have a twisted sense of cute, though. I don't know. Uh, so we can't actually see any diamonds. So it either doesn't have diamonds or they're so small and I can't recognize them because it's charging a little bit. But it just looks like somebody's, uh, it's looked like somebody's um, pie tin after they had a pumpkin pie or something to me. It's not, it's not super exciting. 
sounds delicious, though. I mean, and pie sounds good right about now. Man, I haven't had pumpkin pie in so long. That's what happens when you move out of the U.S., I suppose. That's right. The Twitch, the one thing that Twitch has done for me is made me hungry for things I can't eat. <laughs> My entire live stream is people coming in talking about Mexican food. Oh. Now it's pumpkin pie. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even 10 a.m. and I'm already hungry for pie. Well, you could make it. Um, no, don't have it. They don't have graham crackers? No. They don't sell graham crackers? Get my parents to mail me some, I guess. Yeah. That's weird. What's life like without graham crackers? <laughs> you don't know what you're missing if you never had them. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right. So uh, at this point, we've taken a look at the honing compound, which wasn't super exciting in my opinion. It does look like a little landscape. So there's that. Uh, and it mm -hmm. looks kind of cool with the backscatter in. But other than that, it's not... Um, like, we could look at it in totally in backscatter, which is this side, and it just looks like it's well mixed. Um, I think that's actually something you probably want, right? You want it to be kind of well mixed. Um, that's 50-50 view right there, which is where I had it before. So, um, let's see. What, what we have to do next is sharpen the blade, right? That's right. So I'm going to, let's see. Gonna pull. Oh, yeah, Micah, it's Wednesday here. Yeah, Wednesday morning, almost 10 a.m. I'm going to pull the backscatter detector out just because I will forget about it if I don't and turn off the backscatter channel. I can tell you how many times when I was showing people, oh, here's the backscatter detector and here's what it does, and I turn on the backscatter sensor, and then the next time I turn on the instrument, I forget that I have only the backscatter detector on and I haven't pushed it in, and so it's like the screen is black, and everybody's like, can't see anything i don't know what's wrong and then i think i've broken the machine and then i realize oh it's just i haven't turned on the sensor that it, it needs to see okay so it's almost always user error isn't it yeah 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 it it almost I, always I, I is i find myself cursing my technology and then i realize it's just my own stupid fault <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna hit the home button which sends our sample back down to the bottom so i can take it out and that noise, you, I think you can hear that noise, right? The motor? Can, yeah. Uh, so there's some ASMR for you, and then the blade will come back in. And uh, I need to turn off the voltage, so it's just going to go black for people. And then um, I'm going to I'm going to vent the actual uh, chamber, which means there's a hidden around the corner is a tank of nitrogen. And nitrogen gas is just inert gas, like 80% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. So, um, you know, it's basically clean air. And I'm blowing it into the chamber just so that it's not pulling the air from the room in, if that makes sense. So sure. I don't want the dusty, you know, whatever hair mites and... Uh, pollen and whatever else might be in here that's blowing around inside the ventilation system in the building. Uh, All the pumpkin pie dust. Pumpkin pie dust. Yeah, you name it. I don't want it in there. And no. uh, if I can help it. So I use this super clean nitrogen gas that just pumps into the chamber. And so the little red bar is the atmosphere in the chamber like normalizing. And until it does that, I can't open the chamber door because I'm not strong enough to rip off you know, like a super strong vacuum. So I have That's to... That's what you've grabbed for. They're not strong enough either, actually. If you put all of them together... Of them. No, still not strong enough. And some of them are pretty... I got some pretty strong kids in my lab, but um, it's not going to work for them. So it's uh, it's superhuman. Okay. So uh, while that's going on, I'm going to... Let's see. What am I doing? Can I do this again? Or did it lose my droid cam? Oh, it's, it's just looking at the hat. <laughs> it's doing a great... <laughs> great. It's figured out which way up is on its own. That's my phone for you. And then... So we need a, a shout-out for Pacific Plankton's hat, right? Yeah, it's it's doing yeoman's work. Cameo. Yeah, it's... Uh, the hat's actually... <laughs> was keeping it's my head warm. Lives. Yeah, a little drunk, but uh, it's sorted now. And then you entertain them. i got to take the headphones off because I can't reach the, you know screwdrivers and stuff and uh i'll be back more smack talk right yeah whatever yeah 
So uh, yeah, Ursa, you can't you can't send me seeds. No, I've 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 thought my way around this. You know, there's one uh, restaurant here every uh, every Thanksgiving that does pumpkin pie. I don't know how they manage it. So once a year, once a year, get some pumpkin pie. But aside from that, I just uh, I don't know, drool, yearn. Let's see, what's he doing? He's got a is that a little tool poker. So he's poking the cylinder, everybody. I'm going to give you the scientific rundown on here. You poke the cylinder with the thing, and then you get the thing from the thing with that. You put it back in front of the microscope so that it can see it. And, uh, and this little wiglet's doing, that's just to, um, to sift everything out so it's nice and even, right? Oh, hey, Professor. Hey. I was just doing the um, super scientific rundown of what you were doing. Oh, okay. So yeah. there's my... Uh Battle scars with my cat. Yeah, the battle scars there. Yeah. And mine, mine. Uh, when I started doing woodcuts, they used to look like little U's and little V's because of the shape of the gouger. When oh, you accidentally ouch. stab yourself when you're carving. Ooh, yeah. Ouch. <laughs> when I was a, when I was a student, I would have little U's and little V's all over my hand. So but not for many years. This is the piece that we had in the um, in the old SEM there, and uh, this little stub is just the pin that's used to hold the stub you know, the hold it into the chamber. And then it's got the carbon tape that's on the top that the tool is stuck to. And I'm gonna use my uh, subhuman strength to rip it free. So now you can see the actual The carbon, strength of four grad students. Uh, the strength of half of one man. So <laughs> Half of an undergrad. <laughs> so normally you would have used it like this and stab yourself with this part right here. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you can kind of see the, uh, if I hold it right, uh, there. You can yeah. kind of see the the end of it. Yeah, right. So the bottom of the U faces down. Yeah. And this was the part that was covered with all the rust right here. So that's the part. Then it looks kind of rounded in that picture that we took. Yeah. And this is a little piece of a belt of yours, apparently, or someone's. It's an old scrap of leather, yeah. It's a belt it's for a, sure. Just, That's a belt hole. Yeah, it was a belt. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, it's got some. Bees. You rub the honing compound on it, so that's the green stuff. It's already got some on there. Is yeah, that, I preloaded it for you. Is that enough? Yep. Okay. And then. Well, I I think it's enough, but Watch Printmaker will probably tell me in the chat that it's some somehow wrong. Well, I mean. But we'll say we'll say it's enough. What What am I supposed to do next? Okay, so you want to put Does it need the tool... to be wet? No, 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 okay. not at all. I brought some um, water because I wasn't sure. Uh, you can just sip the water. Mm. It doesn't need to be wet. It's been in a it scientific be dry. instrument. I'm not going <laughs> to sip it. should be dry. Well, if you bombard the water with electrons, it's probably safe to drink, right? It's in a Petri dish, so you're not supposed to drink out of labware. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. All right, so the dry tool, you want the, the convex side down. This side down. Like and... As if I was carving. As if you were carving, yeah, and you want to pull it um, towards sort of me from front to back, so away from the carving end. Towards so the carving like like this. The carving tip, the carving tip is front, so you want to drag it backwards. Like this. Yeah, like that, basically, yeah. And, and just just drag it backwards. I do it about twenty to thirty times. You can do it pretty quickly. Do I need to, you don't push, have to push down too do hard I need either? To push? Just kind Not of too hard, just a little bit. What about with my subhuman strength? Yeah, that's good. Use a uh, use probably twenty five percent of a of a postdoc. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know if I can gauge what that is. You it, got it. It, it feels looks about right. Feels I like can I'm gauge doing it pretty something. well visually, so you're, it looks good to me. It feels like I'm doing. You just something. drag it. Yeah, you just drag it back. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like too much. You just drag it back. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe. Well, this is a, kind of a small a small um, landing strip here, so maybe thirty times. I feel like it would have been easier if somebody hadn't broken the uh, the tool right here. Like That's true. If you had it, it in the, with a handle. Yeah, with a handle it's a lot easier, but then it wouldn't fit in the microscope, would it? That's true. It definitely would, well, I probably would have had to break it. Yeah. Or somebody would have. I probably would have gotten one of my undergrads to break it. So. Get three or four of them together. Well, one of them probably could do it. I don't know, man. I, I, you know, it took me quite a lot of strength. I'm pretty tough. Do you know what you were carving when you broke it? Um, I want to say something like rocks. 
because you know the the image of what you're carving you know it it's um it's psychologically at least it feels harder like if i'm if i'm carving something soft like water it feels a lot easier but if i'm carving like coral it um you know i, I use a lot more strength so is that true no <laughs> not at all you just have like a a a push like how hard you push and then that's it like it's always the same if you can help it uh, it depends on what you're doing right if you're doing some really fine detail you want to be a lot you want to finesse it a bit more but if you've got these big open areas you can just kind of go for it um and if you're in the if you're in the beginning of the carving mark you can go a little harder because there's more like if you if you slip or go too hard and the tool kind of skips off there's a lot more room for error but if you're getting right up to the edge where where the line is supposed to stop then you want to kind of slow it down and use a little bit less force and when you're using um less force you can kind of rock the tool back and forth and it and it helps it go with it with less pressure but uh it's there's not a huge difference in the, in the pressure used i might have just been feeling particularly aggressive that day or maybe just little bits of damage at a time build up and then too much coffee could be yeah that could be too that's a simple tiffany experience. uh Tiffany SD asks me what kind of foods do I eat. I eat all kinds of foods. Taiwanese food is excellent. And there's, um, you know, American food, of course. Uh, mostly what I cook. But, uh... How many McDonald's are by you? How many McDonald's are by me? I think there's one. I think there's one, but, um... But I haven't been there. What about Starbucks? Um, yeah, there's Starbucks is everywhere. <laughs> Starbucks is in. We have, um... Louisa Coffee is kind of the local version of Starbucks, which is, is better and cheaper. Um, and like the Vietnamese food here is amazing because we have um, a large population from Vietnam in, in my city and uh, yeah all kinds Indonesian Japanese yeah, eat so much it's only the Mexican food that, that we don't have and that's the that's sort of the my biggest lament so there you go uh, you gotta carve with the grain oh I um, do try that's carving yeah not, not against it it might be easier if you go with it yeah, that way. Huh? It's a. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That's like giving me a carpal tunnel. You get carpal tunnel? Is that like a real thing that could happen to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wear a wrist brace. Does that stop it? Yeah, yeah, it helps. It holds the bones in so that it, they don't get pushed apart. Mm -hmm. um, like sometimes I'll carve for. Uh, I've I've carved for twelve hours a bit at a time before. Oof. So you gotta like. You gotta you gotta protect your hands. Um, how and I taught myself how to carve, uh, how to carve left-handed as well, so that I can kind of switch back and forth to to take some of the stress off. Are you better left-handed than right? I'm better right than left, but um, but I'm I'm it's it's getting close to parity. Do you um do you find that the left hand you're right-handed? Yeah. Do you find that the left hand is better for power and the right hand is better for control? Uh, so actually, that's interesting. You say that the left hand. Um, I, so when I started carving lefty, I started teaching myself on the, the big open areas where you can make mistakes, and I would just power through, right? Mm -hmm. And so now when I have those big areas, I, I use the left um, just because uh, I want to save the right for the more, the more finesse parts. Um, and so I don't know if, if I'm more powerful with the left, but I, I do the, <laughs> the more powerful areas typically with the left. Although lately when I've been streaming, there's a camera in the way, and so um, I, do my, I do lefty on more finesse stuff because I don't want to bump the camera with my right. I'm just trying to zoom in a little so you can actually see the surface. I suppose I could also... I gotta, I'm using a document camera, so I can kind of do this without... Ursa, now you got to remember my dark secret. In that pie recipe. It doesn't want to sit on the on the channel. Here we go. Oh, hey, little shoot. Does it look clean to you? Ah, uh, it it's when, when you hone it, it's a bit tough, um, a bit tough to tell. Uh, I think it's supposed to get a little shinier on the on the end, but just on the very tip. Maybe I need to angle it a little. So it's a bit different than when you um, when you sharpen it with a stone. Um, I think it's a bit less uh, visually obvious. 
All right. I feel like I feel like I did an okay job here. I could cut wood with it. I don't know. I mean, hey, little chook, how's it going? I'm uh, I'm putting dents in my finger trying to sharpen a piece of metal. Hmm. I can feel a little bit of the grit on the actual blade, but it's not bad. All right, so I'm gonna just mount it back the way it was. Yeah, so the part the part that's really important is just the very the very edge of the blade, right? The very the very tip of it. All that other stuff with the the rusty bits um, wouldn't affect too much the carving. It's mostly the where it gets really shiny and then where it gets really really shiny um, on that that left edge. Yeah. Well, I think I got it. It looks shiny all over to me, except for on the very sides, which I didn't try to clean. And you don't need to do the sides. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do back to hiding this thing. Yeah. And then we've got, I've got to put it back in the SEM. So entertain people, you know, do a All right. carving dance or whatever. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say good things this time. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. talk, talk a little bit about, um, so, you know, the carving aspect of it seems like, uh, one of it's it's sort of like a technique thing but two it's like a mindset right because you have to kind of think in negative space a lot more mm -hmm. and then the third part which is like i think maybe i could train myself to carve but i don't know that i could do the like you draw first right so you have to kind of yeah, yeah. you have to be good at drawing and then you kind of have to be good at all the other stuff well and you have to draw it backwards so it's a double it's a double reverse right because right. when you print it, it comes out the opposite direction that you drew it in, just like a stamp. So when you draw the picture, you have to um, you have to compose it in reverse. You have to think about it how it's going to look in in the opposite. So like, you go ahead and take off your gear. <laughs> so um, yeah, when I draw it, I use a mirror. Um, so like, I'll draw for a bit, and then I'll check it in the mirror to make sure that um, to make sure that the composition is okay and make sure it looks it looks good. And actually using a mirror if you're an artist is great, even if you're not doing woodcuts, because you can see all your mistakes when you use a mirror. Um, even if you're making a painting or something, right? You look at it in the mirror and you go, oh man, that proportion is way off. I, I didn't see that regularly. So it kind of gives you a fresh perspective. But when you're doing the woodcuts, you draw it backwards. And that's the one kind of reverse thing you have to do. And then when you're carving it, you have to think about it backwards as well. So it's a, it's a reductive process. So instead of the mark you're making being a, a positive thing, it's, it's, a, it's a negative thing. It's like doing a, doing a chiaroscuro drawing where you're using white chalk drawing on black paper or something like that, you're removing um, all the white. And if you want to have a black line in the final picture, you have to make two carving marks, one on either side of the line. So you carve like a white channel out on each side, and then the part that remains in the middle is your one black line. So it's... Um, it's quite a bit different than just drawing, if that makes sense. Well, I only um, caught a little bit of it. Thank you, thank you to Drop Bear Antics. Um, I guess, I guess that's a compliment. What'd they say? Somebody thinks I sound like Jimmy Fallon. Oh. Okay. Um, so if you mean if you mean hilarious, <laughs> uh, then then thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Can you sing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think Jimmy I, Fallon I sings, a, right? Sometimes. Yeah, no, I, I I sing in uh, in KTV, which is the Taiwanese karaoke, where you get like your own private room with just your friends there. If I get if I get uh, three or four tall boys of beer, uh, I, I might um, I might I might sing a couple tunes, but it's not anything anybody wants to listen to. But thankfully, by that point of the night, nobody will remember. So, so you miss uh, you miss the pie and the mexican food what about the yeah. beer no the beer's fine here yeah right. it used to it used to not be uh when i first moved here all you could get was uh taiwan beer which is um kind of like a super light mm -hmm. you know translucent super super see-through but lately the uh, micro brew thing has, has picked up beer and coffee have gotten a lot better over the past 13 years So it's it's the uh, it's mostly the food the the Mexican food number one and then probably like cold feeling cold I miss that you're never cold not really no uh, well you guys have had like 
uh, very limited COVID, right? We've had, yeah, we've had, we had no local cases from last April through, through the new year. And then we had a couple of scattered local cases happen, um, but they, they tamped it down. So everything here has been completely normal. Like all the businesses are still open, have been open the whole year, schools. Uh, we have a gallery here where my studio is and we've had openings every month with lots of people. And we're very lucky. But, but people here, they had, um, I think in 2005, they had the SARS pandemic, and that was pretty bad. And so the government uh, got really serious about preparing for that sort of a thing. And so, so when COVID happened, they were ready. They were all over it. Hmm, even that's in, weird. Uh, even in, in late 2019, the government here was, was uh, working on it. A prepared government. You think that's, yeah, you yeah, think that's key? That, huh? You think that's key? I don't know. It seems important. <laughs> that's a hot I, take. I, it's... it's it served us well here. Yeah, sorry for the controversial <laughs> statement, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, I pushed in the backscatter detector, and I'm going to set it to A plus B 50-50, which is where it was before. And then uh, let's see. Now I'm going to find where we were. So I've got to go somewhere. Aha! So this is the end of the part with the blade, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the blade. It looks like uh, all the rust is gone. Yeah, it looks less craggy to me. Uh, for sure. There's, uh, you can see if I go up to the part where I wasn't cleaning it um, here, there's some more rust, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. I totally cleared off that rust. I don't know if the bright color is because there's a little bit of the compound dust on the surface. Um, I'm going to guess that's what that is. So if I turn off the A plus B and just go with this, yeah. So we get a nice clean view. I think the compound is like, it's like a fine powder that's like coated over the surface now. So when I use the A plus B view, like this view here, see how bright it looks? And yeah. I think that's because there's a little bit of the powder on all of the surface. But you don't have any of the dark spots. Like we had these really bad dark spots right up here. Everything's really dark. So, uh, and then in terms of the actual like blade itself, um, let me get it in focus and then we can kind of critique what happened there. Because I'm not totally in focus yet. There, there we go. So, I mean, we didn't do a super close in zoom before of this, but I think you can see some of the scrape marks still. And when I get real close and it does look a little bit sharper, something buzzed. I think it was my phone. Uh, Maybe it was the hat. It could be. Well, the hat and the phone are together. So right now they're feeling it. Uh, but so this actually looks a lot cleaner as an edge. I don't know about sharper. Um, it's hard to tell because... Yeah, it is hard to tell, huh? Um, I mean, this edge looks a little bit sharper, but it's got nicks and stuff in it. So, but it doesn't look as rounded as it was. Hmm. What do you think? These tools seen better days, huh? It doesn't look as rounded, yeah. The nicks are more apparent as well, so maybe, maybe that's a good sign, right? Yeah, probably. Well, we can um, we'll zoom out to sort of where we were before. And I did a better job of aligning it. So I'm going to rotate it a little. And I think I turned it the wrong way. Let's go backwards now a little. I'm drunk, drunk rotation. I'm just going to keep turning it until it's kind of where I want it. There we go. And then let's do a picture like this. So I'm going to zoom right way into these things and try to get it some of this like super sharply focused first. This 
surface is really difficult to figure out what's what's in focus, to be honest. Which is, I guess, a good sign. Does so, that mean it's smoother? Yeah, so there's just little pits. These little mm -hmm. pits right in here. Look That's like, all you have to go by to resolve it. <laughs> yeah, because everything else is pretty flat. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't, I mean, I guess I could, I could get crazy closer. It probably would I'd be able to get some of these little grooves and and check them out, but there we go. It's not going to get a whole lot better than that. So I think that's a positive. It does seem like the blade's a lot shinier and cleaner. Yeah, for sure. And then I mean the fact that you can see more um, more of the the sort of irregularities in the in the tip there must mean that it's sharper, right? Yeah. So, and I think I think it, I did an okay job. I think you probably could get it sharper though. I mean, I feel like if you had a stone, it probably would clean up a lot. Sharper. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I should have sent you a brand new tool too. Yeah, that would be nice. Because the, um, yeah, yeah, the new ones, it, it's, it's like night and day carbon with a new one and an old one. Um, but like I said, with the, with the stone, like when you sharpen these, because they're, they're rounded, you have to keep it at this consistent angle and you have to kind of rock the tool back and forth, like left to right, as you're pulling it across the stone. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's pretty complicated um, technique to get it to work really well, to get it really sharp. Um, and so like I, I've... I've Every maybe two years, I think, ah, I'm going to sharpen a bunch of my old carving tools so I don't have to go buy new ones. And I sit down and I start doing it, and then it just makes them duller and duller and duller. <laughs> and then I think, ah, I would pay somebody $5 to do this for me. And that's about what a new, a new tool costs. So yeah, uh, I end up just going, ah, forget it. I'm going to buy myself another one. Well, I think that um, part of the reason the new tools probably work a little bit better is you don't have all those little nicks in the uh on the edge yeah, they're not dinged up yeah. and then i think that actually is you know causing some resistance when you're trying to to push it to carve it um mm -hmm. so you probably need yeah, a, like a whole new it. edge you need to put a whole new edge on it right to get rid of all those nicks yeah. if you yeah, really want it so. yeah well and the new ones, when you get them, they have uh, they got a plastic cap over the blade, and there's some some oil or something inside. I think mm -hmm. it's probably to keep it from rusting. Definitely. Yeah, well, I probably could just go to the store and buy a carving tool that's new. I guess so. Yeah. Don't now, they, they sell them at the hardware stores? stores? In Indiana, right? Uh, this is from the art supply store. I think hardware stores have um, have this kind of tool as well, though. Um, um, maybe not this. Maybe not this brand, but they have. Um, those kind of sets you can get like sets of five or six in a little case yeah uh, i know the hardware stores here have them they just have wood handles yeah exactly yeah uh i'll take a look uh i need to go to the hardware store sometime soon anyway i don't know about an art store i don't think uh, like indiana has art stores but uh Terre Haute, where i am i don't think we have anything like that anyway does your school have an art program uh I mean, I'm sure they have one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> just go down to the art room and uh, ask if you can borrow a tool. Just snap it off. Yeah, they might frown on that. I don't know. Um, yeah. I have some colleagues that are in the art, that are over in arts. Um, mm -hmm. They do pottery and stuff, though. So I don't, uh, I don't know any of the car. I don't know if we have any carving people here. But you need to have a print shop, if you have a printmaking department, and that's that can get pricey, getting presses and stuff. Yeah. So um, I was going to ask about this. You uh, you recently opened a like a t-shirt shop or something with your some of your prints, like a uh, uh, oh, yeah. independent t-shirt shop, like not not like your own backyard t-shirt shop, but like. Oh no, I, I've I've done my own t-shirts here for a long time. I screen print them all, but um, it's a it, inventory is a nightmare when you do that, right? So um, a friend of mine recommended some some website, uh, Threadless that does um, shirts that you can just upload whatever picture you want. I mean, you could make, I'm a, I'm a science. <laughs> you can upload that. <laughs> but yeah, I turned my, my emotes into um, shirts. 
you can see them in the chat, uh, and a couple of my woodcuts as well. So you can, uh, actually, this was a question I wanted to ask. Uh, can you um, print t-shirts from woodblock? Or do you, because uh, I think you nor could, normally they yeah. don't, right? Normally they use silkscreen or something, right? Yeah, people do. You can definitely do that. Um, and I, I think the, the, um, the trick is you've got to stretch the shirt. Um, to, <laughs> sorry, I'm seeing my emotes flying across the screen now. <laughs> uh, I think you have, to, you have to stretch the shirt just right. It's a little bit complicated. Um, and like depends on what kind of ink you use. Like the screen printing ink that you get they have it like specially made for fabric right and then you you print it on the shirt and then you heat set it so that when you wash it it doesn't come out so for for block printing um i've seen people do it but i don't know exactly uh you know this this special ink you would have to get i i, I guess you might be able to use screen printing ink if you if you modify it so that it can be rolled on with a roller with a brayer but i'm not really sure but i've definitely seen people do it before mm. but you that's not how you do your screens. I do. I do screen printing. Um, Silk screen. I built myself. A, yeah, I built myself a light table, and you just get the photosensitive emulsion, and you turn the lights off. You coat the screens, let it dry, and then you make a positive of your image, and you kind of burn it in um, with the light table. Then you rinse out the part that that the light didn't touch. So you make your positive. It's black. It blocks the the light from hitting the emulsion. The part that the light does hit hardens the emulsion. And then you you spray it out, and then um, you use a squeegee, and you can run the ink through the parts that you sprayed out. It's um, a pretty pretty simple, straightforward uh, process once you get the hang of it. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like um, uh, like I used to run a dark room. So like on the photography side of things, it's uh, a lot of the things are kind of similar, right? Like the yeah, approach yeah. is kind of similar, looking at the negative and exposing it to light and then what you're left with and so it's, it's a lot of similar processes I had a friend who used to have yeah, a, sure. a t-shirt like they had a t-shirt company but they had like a like a computer did everything right like they were already to that point where like you could just upload a graphic and then it would print the different colors on a shirt somehow I don't yeah, know there's, yeah there's a different um, I think the ones that the computer prints it's, it's um, a different feeling right I think it's a little bit more plasticky. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's much easier and quicker to do. I think that the Threadless site does it that way. I don't think they screen print all of theirs. Yeah. Because it would just be ridiculous. Because they, they do, like, you know, made to order, basically. Yeah. Because all, all the work you, you is, like, in the actual, like, carving out one color at a time, right? Or whatever. Well, the work is in preparing the screens, really. That's yeah. the funny part about screen printing. It's 90% um, of screen printing is setup and cleanup. And uh, maybe maybe ten percent, if that is actually printing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow, that looks really cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's for me the SEM is like. Uh, it's it's my favorite part of work. Like I like to just come in here. I could just I'm in my own little bubble. I just and you get lost in. Um, in what you're doing and uh you know it, we've been looking at this stuff for an hour and a half it feels like maybe we just started to me like you know what i mean like it's, i don't know how it feels like to everybody else but from my point where i'm running the instrument and watching it take the picture because it builds it so slowly um you just get used to that pace and a lot of times when i'm taking a picture of something um with the scm i mean uh i it, it just looks so stunning to me the first time I see it. Like, I get everything in focus, and I'm just like, damn, that looks stunning. And then, yeah. uh, you know, I, it's hard to replicate, like, it, you know, because it, it's just building this image very slowly, and you're seeing all this detail, and just like, whoa. And, um, you know, when you see the final picture, sometimes it doesn't have the same feel because you didn't watch it grow you know what i mean like you didn't see it just put these tiny dots in there like a little bit at a time and uh and it's like watching film develop or something it has a kind of a special feel to me um it's like watching live sculpture right the, the machine is sculpting this thing for you it's, yeah, it's yeah yeah slowly yeah. building it up and then and there's kind of the anticipation of the, the final image as well yeah 
and then yeah just it has so much detail i'm always just like whoa it's just like crazy uh seeing it and then um so it's super exciting for me like uh and and it's especially nice to be able to uh see you live in the lab because um, <laughs> the time change right like usually when i when i can see you live it's uh when you're at the home yeah. the home microscope so this yeah. is uh, definitely a treat for me well um Maybe I'll think about doing some night streams with uh, diatoms or something else besides pieces of metal that I've sharpened. Um, <laughs> oh, this is actually kind of neat for me because I don't look at metal uh, and metal things, and I almost never get to use the uh, the backscatter detector because I don't do anything. I mean, this is the way this would look without the backscatter detector. You can't, you know, you can't see that coating, and um, so it really does enhance the view and those little uh little notches or craters you know you can't see any of that detail anymore and i could flip it back on so you could see what i mean right all that's gone all this stuff in here just disappears and uh and you just have like a you know like maybe it's a little darker or something but the grooves are still you could still see a groove here or there but mm -hmm. um I don't know. It's a, it's sort of neat to have it as a, a thing we could see. Most of the time, I just don't put metal in here. Um, there's a guy in the chemistry department downstairs who looks at meteorites, and um, we put some of his. He had like a piece. He didn't mind me gold coating. I don't know why we even gold coated. I guess because it was an epoxy or something. Um, but uh, he didn't mind me putting it in there for his students who were here. Uh, look, I was showing them how the SM worked, and. Um, that was kind of cool to be able to like stick a meteor in the a meteorite in the uh, in the SEM. Um, but yeah, most of the time it's diatoms and little organisms. That's where most of my, you know, fossils are where most of my time goes. Uh, sometime during the day, we, we do like feathers and pollen and plants, flowers, whatever. But it's been winter, so um, we haven't had a lot of that stuff for a while. Um, and I'm hoping uh, to have a, a little bit more diversity in our selection. Um, mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah. A lot of stuff. The meteorite sounds like fun, too. Yeah, it's... Um, it's if you're fast enough, you could put snow in there, right? Uh, <laughs> you need to run. It, they have a um, some scanning electron microscopes where you can put... It has, like, a cold plate in there. And mm -hmm. you could put cold stuff in, and it'll keep it cold. And then you could SEM a a snowflake or something if you wanted to um amazing uh yeah i i think probably the easiest thing to do would be like freeze a piece of glass and then have it land on the glass and bring it in i could put it on the stereoscope i probably could do that um but we don't have snowflakes anymore so we're past that um, uh, we're we're into i'm i've switched to sandals for the most part so we're at that point where i i've switched to sandals so uh, and then it sandals all the way around until like it starts snowing again, basically for me. Careful with open-toed shoes around that blade. Well, uh, I'm right now. I'm not wearing sandals, but because uh, I'm I'm kind of dressed up today. But um, sandals would look weird with a a shirt, you know. The, a real That's shirt. Okay. You're a professor. You can get away with it. That's true. I could do whatever, really. I mean. Professor Zoidberg <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> what did they say, Professor Zoidberg? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From uh, Futurama. Why not diatoms? Uh, anyway, so let's. Uh, I I guess that's what we wanted to do for today, right? Yeah, that was the plan. I don't know if you want to look at something Great. else while I'm here. Um, I could throw some diatoms in there if you want to look at them, but uh, you know. Other... I would, but I have a I have another appointment coming up in a few minutes. Oh, you were supposed to tell us. Uh, Oh, in a few minutes. Um, yeah, in a, in a little bit, a little bit here, but I, I have to. You, um, you were supposed to tell us about your interview, how your interview went. Uh, oh, yesterday. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. You didn't. My, my uh, language skills held. They held up. I, I um, yeah, they held up. They held up well. Okay. I managed to describe everything I needed to describe, and uh, most part understood all the questions. So, yeah. Did you have nice. a, Did you have occasion to talk about the business goose? I did not. No. No. <laughs> Um, maybe next time I should have, uh, <laughs> yeah, 
yeah. next time. All right. Well, uh, I guess if that's that, we'll, we'll yeah, end the stream. It's actually here. a shame. I, I should have kept my schedule open because I would actually love to look at some diatoms and stuff. But Well, maybe we'll do another night stream and I can have you hang out while I talk about things I know something about. Yeah. I'll just be in the background going, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I'll be your hype guy. Oh, that's fine. I could probably use yeah. one of those. Although I think usually Pacific Plankton does a pretty good job of hyping me. Um, All right. Well, maybe we can both hype you next time. Yeah, I can fit more people into the Discord. Yeah. I just need to make the little right. make the little doodad bigger so people will know who's talking. Yeah. But uh, be cacophonous. It'll be great. This uh, this was great, and actually, this was really cool that it, we got the uh, I got the Discord uh, stream kit doodad working. So you should mm -hmm. should try it for whatever it was you were gonna do because I think this is nice. And yeah, it looks really good. It was easy to set up, and also. Um, it shows a little icon if you want and whatever else, right? So Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I could barely sleep last night. I was so excited. Really? I'm going, to, well, uh, I'm going to colorize some of your carving things in, uh, in uh, Adobe Lightroom, and then I'll post them to your it's the untouched ones and the touched up ones. Uh, to your Discord, and I'll stick some in my Discord. And awesome, so I can't wait. people who want to check those out can look at them up close, and I think that would be fun. Yeah, I think so too. And maybe I'll also go buy a carving knife that's new. So Compare and contrast. For, for later. Very good. All right. Excellent. Cool. Well, look, I had a lot of fun. So thank you so much for having me, and thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. Yeah, it was, uh, it's uh, it's fun to do sort of different things, and also it's I'm sure there's a part of my audience that's like, oh, you never stream from the SEM at night, so like you, right? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, right. They don't get to see yeah, this. I'm, I'm glad they didn't confiscate the uh, carving tool at Customs either. I would be a little bit worried more worried about this. Uh, this honing, um, compound. honing compound it just looks like yeah. you know like a little dangerous pile of uh of goop green powder could be anything right well i, I put honing compound on the on the uh, <laughs> customs invoice so i'm sure they knew exactly what it was <laughs> they, 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 i'm surprised that didn't get it like hauled up at customs honestly um <laughs> that, that seems oh, the like i was probably like oh yeah no I, I know what that is yeah no no it's fine it's fine <laughs> yeah definitely uh <laughs> Uh, any, all, right. all right, this is this is cool, and I want to thank all the people for hanging out with us while we were uh, looking at this cool stuff. And yeah, thanks everybody for coming around, uh, especially the uh, the art folks. Yeah, really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I draw in the art folks now and then, so uh, it's it's nice Nicely put. nice crossover. Yeah. All right, um, I'll let you get back to your. Uh, your day you're just getting your day started and i'm gonna go yeah, home yeah. and i gotta write uh i'm working on uh, a lecture about hydrothermal vents for my uh vtuber characters so that's, oh yeah uh, that's coming up very good thursday right. i have well, to have I'll a lecture to too. yeah i love vents <laughs> i do <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i love hydrothermal vents i mean i love all this science stuff so but you, you could tell me anything you're working on and i'd probably go oh man that's so <laughs> awesome i'm so excited so I look forward to that. Cool. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> take care. <laughs> yep. Bye. And see you later. we'll see everybody out there. I guess maybe I should find somebody to raid, actually. Uh, let's try All to right. I'm going to pop on out. Okay. See you, chat. Bye, Professor. Yep. Thanks, guys. Probably should be a good, uh, a good citizen and raid somebody. So uh, let's see. Oh, paleontologizing was probably a good choice. So I'm going to stick him in the raid thing here. And then uh, we'll do that. And yeah, I want to thank everybody for hanging out. It's been fun little, uh, a fun little stream from the SEM. And especially want to thank uh, John for shipping that stuff to us. And... Um, and, and showing me how to, explaining to me how to sharpen the carving tools and, uh, and talking a little bit about his art. You should definitely check out um, John's uh, Twitch stream. It's uh, very laid back and um, 
and uh, he does his drawings, the carvings, uh, the printing, and the painting all on Twitch. So um, you can see projects, you can watch them sort of go from the beginning all the way through to the finished print, uh, painted prints. So I think that's actually really amazing. And uh, he's got a stream coming up, as he mentioned earlier, with uh, Ursa Crafta, where they're going to dual draw um, on the same stream, and they're going to look at uh, some photographs that uh, Pacific and I had both contributed. So, uh, and viewers will get to vote which they draw, I think. So you should check that out, and, uh, and we'll catch you guys later. So I may not be able to stream tomorrow. They're going to be tweaking the SEM a little bit. The maintenance guy's coming in the morning, but if he's cleared out by one, I'll probably try to do a regular stream for tomorrow. So other than that, we'll, we'll catch you. Uh, if I don't see you Wednesday, then Saturday, right? Okay. Here we go. Um, not in my house. <laughs>